design an evangelistic service. Number one, plan it with your target in mind. Plan it with your target in mind. Who are you planning to invite? What are their needs? Are you planning to invite families? Okay, then who's coming? Who's, who's going to come with the families? Children. What age is children? Six months to 12 years. Do you have a plan for them? Do you have a place for them? What if, a, if the baby is a feeding baby, right? Do you, if you, you know, teenagers, if people are going to come with cars, are you planning parking? You know, to make it as easy as possible to attend. How do I do that? Offer multiple services. Oh, then I'll have to preach three times. Preach. God will give you the strength. Multiple services and multiple sites. But we have our building. A choda yaar building. You go. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. <laughs> Number two. Offer surplus parking. Number three. Offer children's classes at the same time as the service. Agar aayenge to bache lehe kya aayenge. Come on. Are you going to look after the children? Are you going to take care of lunch? If you are going to call them so early in the morning. Are you going to call them late in the afternoon? Now they have to go home. Now they have to cook the sabji. You know if you are going to have a service at 11.45, 11.30. Then by the time they finish. Have something to eat. Give them something Number to three, eat. Improve the pace and flow of your service. Come on, man. Come on. Don't keep those gaps. You know, those things. We don't know what's going on. Are we gone? Okay, if it's only family, if it's only your church people, oh, we know uncle is taking time to get up from his fifth row and make his way all the way to the front. Okay? And Jesus is calling him. He's, he's, he's coming. But when the unbelievers are sitting there, they don't know what's going on. He, they don't know what's going on. Gaps, changes, no information about what are we doing next. Those, that kind of flow. So keep the pace, keep the flow of your service. Speed it up. There needs to be some energy, just some energy from the beginning to the end. Look for ways to save time. Okay, don't have, don't have uh, announcements. When you have announcements, first of all, I guarantee you from 27 years of ministry experience, nobody's listening. They're not listening to your announcement. Print it, give it to them in writing. WhatsApp it. Instagram it. Do what you have to do to get it into their inbox and say, I've sent it to you. You can check it later. But right now, and announcements take up a lot of time. Announcements break the flow between the, between the worship and the word. Okay? What the worship was, all, was supposed to do, you know, cover the ground, get it all ready for the worship. Now everybody's like, heart is ready, one foot in heaven, you just all sorted and all that. And now he's talking about, you know, budget in this 24 lakhs and deficit and this and that and that fellow is nothing and these guys left the church okay let's just now look into God's word are you with me it's just there's no flow we don't know what we're trying to do so there needs to be this plan go straight from worship into the word and let the pastor himself or the leader or the speaker himself kind of okay by the way just before we get into God's word a couple of family matters don't forget this don't forget this okay let's go into God's word you know, just keep it, keep it smooth, keep it moving. And even between worship or between the songs, too, too much. So just think through. Again, again, target audience. Target Otherwise, audience. the transition times. Keep pastoral prayers understandable and short. But we're talking about unbelievers, right? If unbelievers were sitting there and the whole church is like this and there's a long prayer, how would you feel if you were a believer? <laughs> How would you feel if you would, you get what I'm saying? Is it wrong for to pray for long? No. But is that the situation? Is that the time? And how do you think through what they are thinking about? Okay, keep pastoral press understandable. We're not saying short, we're saying understandable. But even if they are short or long, think about it. Number five, number four, focus on making visitors feel comfortable. Listen to this. In the first 12 minutes, even shorter I would say, but even the first 12 minutes, people have decided whether they'll come back or not. People have decided whether they'll come back or not. Even long before the sermon, long before the songs, long before they, in the first few minutes they came, sat down, they know whether they're coming back here. So we take our, our guests to the back. And I'm saying when, we, when I say we do this, after thinking and trying and, you know, we have learned these lessons. Okay. Take them to the back. We play jazz music. As ungodly as that is, we play jazz music. It's chilled. Everybody, it just calms, it calms everybody down. They do it in restaurants. They do it in other places. Huh? There's no incorrect style. Yeah. 
And it doesn't have any words, so yeah. <laughs> Overwhelcoming, na? Overwelcoming. Yeah, kuch jade focus kar diya isme. Something is wrong. Haan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, then bringing him up and saying and then fall to me, you're just pointing at him. All that, that. Oh, we just think through that and make it. So first 12 minutes, he have decided. She didn't think about that. What does that mean? We call it prime time. 12 minutes before, let's make it 10 minutes, okay? 12 minutes, who's going to count to? 10 minutes. 10 minutes before and 10 minutes after. That's your prime time. Okay, pastor, friends, loved ones, uh, strong ministry members. As soon as the, before the service, what are you doing? You're making them feel welcome. After the service, what are you doing? Go to your friend. No, go straight back to them. Hi, who is it? You want to leave? Okay, let, let me walk you out. Let me walk you out. And while you're walking out, don't, whatever they want to do. You know, can I get you a cup of tea? Are you going to stick around? Can I get you a cup of tea? You got five minutes? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You could take one cup of tea, give them a cup of tea. Apne friend ko chodo, yaar. He's there. You've got his phone number. That is not the time to be going after. You get what I'm saying? So if you're thinking ministry-wise, you're thinking outreach, you're think, if you're going to call unbelievers, don't ignore them. Oh, oh, it's so frustrating. When I see un new people come, I'm not going to use the unbelievers, I say new people. When new people come, and well, they're just standing over there. You know, it's like, somebody talk to me, somebody talk to me. Or don't talk to me, don't talk to me. Don't. They're just, and all our people are seeing each other for the first time in their lives. Oh, they are so happy to see each other because seven days have passed. Okay? And these guys, just, there's no focus on taking care. Taking care of the new people. Right? Sometimes, it not always happens, but sometimes. These are the kind of things we need to think through. It's funny, especially in our culture, but we need to look at it. Focus on making visitors feel comfortable. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. You never get a second chance to make a first impression. Your visitor's first emotion is usually fear. Your visitor's first emotion is usually fear. They are scared to be there, man. They, they, it's just they're out of their comfort zone. So the first goal is to help them to relax. Help them to relax. We're not judging you. We welcome you. We'd love to have you. So grateful you're here. Say it from the pulpit. Say it in person. Say it, okay? So here's...